Let's look at some of the semantic features of the wiki hyperglossary. Here I have a website um, by, on epa.gov on class 1 ozone depleting substances. And, and let's say I want some more information on some of these chemicals. I can um, copy the URL, go over to the wiki hyperglossary. I'm at the public interface. I've not logged in. And I have two options, submit text or submit URL. And I'm going to um, paste in the URL from the EPA site. And, um, and I see I got an extra L there I got to get rid of. And I'm going to choose my glossary. And I'm going to choose the Sam Houston State University Atmospheric Chemistry Glossary because that will have a lot of um, information on um, uh, gaseous compounds. And this glossary comes back marked up. And um, some of these words are in green. And the words in green um, are connected to the hyperglossary. Now I can click on carbon tetrachloride. And um, there's a non-editable definition along with an, a definition that students can contribute to if they... Um, I'll log in and I can click on we have three more tabs for chemicals and this is associating an inchy an international chemical identifier with it and I click on the first tab and it takes that um, inchy and queries um, chem spider and um, we come up with information on um, chem spider that can get us materials such as physical properties um, spectra etc associated with this chemical uh, I click on 3d structure model and if the models in if the chemical is in Models 360 database, it will bring back a enhanced JMOL. And if it's not in the Models 360 database, um, it will create a JMOL um, off the cuff um, using balloon um, optimization. And we'll show that in a minute. Now, if I go over to the 2D structure, it will load the JChem paint. This usually takes a second. And I now have the ability to edit the molecule that I have. So, for example, I could remove one of these chloro groups, um, add a methyl group, and um, and now I can generate a identifier um, of the molecule I've created and submit that to the chem spider. And I now have what I call a molecular editor enabled knowledge framework where I can be reading about an article, change the physical, um, reading about a chemical in an article, change the molecule that I'm reading and acquire published information on both the original molecule and the edited molecule and any subsequent edits. So I just keep, it just keeps adding new tabs to my, um, um, my, my JavaScript overlay. Now, if I scroll up to the top, notice um, here I've got um, bromotrifluoromethane, and I don't believe, I, I, one of these is not in the Models 360. Um, okay, this one is not in the Models 360, so I was able to generate it. Um, so these are all, but notice that some of these words are not green, okay? And these words are not um, in the atmospheric chemistry glossary, so I do not have um, uh, an inchy associated with them, but I can turn on JAS, which is JavaScript Automated Search, and this is what I call an uncontrolled vocabulary, and if I highlight any word in this document, it will then take that word and query the chem spider and allow me to get a information on this compound, even though the compound is not in the um, um, in the glossary that I am using. The problem is is that I can qu I can query any word. So I could query like group 2, which would be a nonsense thing. 